they're all able to get going, but it will be Louis Foster who leads from the uh, number 88, I think that might be. Uh, well, the look, closer look, but no, not number 88, number 28, I should say. That is Cameron Das, it's Foster from Das, and then Mason, and that's the last thing that Louis Foster wanted because Cameron Das might have a little bit extra. We need to go through, what do we do? And Josh Mason gets up in the air. That is completely wrong. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm back with another race weekend recap, but this time we're in Spa Francorchamps in Belgium. Spa is actually my favorite track in the world for its unique combo of long straights, elevation, as well as its perfectly laid out technical and fast corner sequences. But despite it being my favorite track in the world, it seems to always give me a hard time. And guess what? This time was no exception. But before we get into that, let me just update you on where we stand so far in case you haven't seen the previous recaps from Portugal and from France. So as it stands right now, we've been on the podium 6 out of 6 times and won 4 of those races. I'm leading the championship by a healthy 55 point margin, so we're looking pretty strong heading into the third round of the championship at Spa. So for Quali, probably one of the biggest topics at Spa is the slipstream. Because you have Sector 1 and Sector 3 almost completely comprised of long straights, you have a massive lap time booster by being in the draft of another car. With that being said, you may also lose some aero performance in the corner heavy Sector 2. Based on my pace and practice, we decided that the best option to hedge risk was actually to just do a lap completely on my own without any slipstream. Despite the slipstream netting other drivers 6 tenths of a second or more per lap, we still qualified P3 right on the heels of the pole position time. And P3 is arguably one of the better places to start from given the massive straight following turn one. Up the ball in the garage, we get the green flag at the back and it'll be all eyes to the lights. And foot to the floor as we go racing in Spa. And that looks like an excellent start from Louis Foster, who's able to take that racing line. Meanwhile, Josh Mason really having to defend there from Cameron Das trying to go down the inside. We've got a car out wide there having to go over the sausage. After a clean getaway off the line, I've now positioned myself in second place, just ahead of the white car going through Eau Rouge. The slipstream's effect is pretty huge here, and we have a long Kemmel straight after we get up on top of the hill. So it's time to decide what my move is going to be heading into turn five. Number 28, I should say. That is Cameron Das. It's Foster from Das. And then Mason. And that's the last thing that Louis Foster wanted because Cameron Das might have a little bit extra. We need to go through. What do we do? And Josh Mason gets up in the air. That is completely ruined. His well, race. thankfully, everyone was fine after this incident. But this moment changed our entire weekend. You see that Louis defends to the left of the screen. And just as that happens, Josh and I move to the right. And as we do that, Louis swerves back to the right, which kind of sandwiches Josh and I together. I managed to get back to the pit lane with a punctured left rear tire. The team didn't notice any mechanical damage to the car when they did their brief checks, so I actually went back on track to try and catch the pack. Luckily for me, a safety car came out at just the right moment. Eventually, I actually caught the safety car, but I started to notice that my wheel was not centered properly anymore. It was just pointing a little bit towards the right. The car felt okay, but it was difficult to tell at the slow speeds behind the safety car. We ended up having two safety cars in quick succession, which actually allowed me to pass my way back up into the top six. That was really the perfect spot to be in because the second race is actually determined by the reverse top six order of the first race. It was around this time though that the steering wheel actually started to become more and more off center each lap. Not only that, but the car was actually becoming super understeery in right hand corners, and then it was a complete drift machine going into the left-handers. I also felt like the left rear suspension was starting to buckle through Eau Rouge, which was obviously pretty scary. But I also kind of thought that maybe the car could survive just long enough to finish the race in the top six, which would put me in a great place starting in race two in the morning on Sunday. It didn't take long before the steering wheel was pointing 45 degrees to the right while driving in a straight line. And the team could now see the damage from the TV monitors. So they actually called me in before the suspension could give way. I think Das has got an issue. He's, he's dropped back significantly. Even before the overtake of Enzo Trilli, he dropped back quite a few car lengths. And particularly in corner entry there, it looked like the rear of the car was almost... Look, I think there's something wrong with his car. It looks like it's towing slightly uh, to the right as it goes into corners. So potentially a steering issue. Can you see how it's not quite straight? That's very peculiar. Enzo Sionti is going to get past for seventh place. 
As the commentators pointed out, you can see how the car is like drifting in a straight line almost with that damage. So retiring the car at this point was the right call, especially considering that we were already outside of the top six, which basically meant that the race was a wash. So because of the result in race one, we'd be starting ninth for race two. With the new format, this always is one of the most exciting and nerve-wracking races of the weekend. The top six order is determined by the reverse top six of race one, and the fastest lap of race two will actually be our qualifying lap for race three. Everyone will be on new tires for this race because of that qualifying aspect, so the whole grid is on a level playing field. Black and it is all eyes to the lights. And foot to the floor as we go racing in Spa for race two here in Euro Formula Open. Slow start in the back. It looks like Enzo Schianti struggling to get away, but Enzo truly... That was a pretty decent start. I just barely managed to avoid that stalled car in front of me. And through the turn one chaos, I pass another car, which puts me in P7, heading into turn five at the top of the hill. And here's another nice move for P6 around the outside of the orange car in turn seven. The first lap was full of maneuvers and overtake attempts. I actually ended up lap 1 in P5 already, but I knew if all this fighting continued lap after lap, I'd probably lose the chance to utilize the peakiness of new tires for my race 3 quali lap. And on a long track like Spa, which is really tough on tires, those first couple of laps on new tires can be 6 tenths, 7 tenths, 8 tenths quicker than any laps later in the race. What you're seeing now is actually on lap 2. I was swamped after being stuck too close behind another car in a rouge, so I actually ended up falling back to P7 here. My engineer later called this actually the move of the race, because it would have almost certainly ended up in a crash had I not backed out and bided my time. I really lost so much momentum from this, and I nearly even fell back to 8th position, but I ended up sticking it around the outside in turn 9, and from there on it was all about clinical overtakes back up to the podium and setting fast lap times with the bit of extra space I now had. Move. It's going to draw alongside now. Actually, Enzo Trulli's been caught up very quickly. Free wide again. They're, they're all doing the McHackenen today. Cameron Das passed two at once down the inside. He's ahead of Mansell. He's ahead of Trulli. He is up into third place now. Christian Mansell's out fourth. And before I knew it, I was in P3. It took some monster lap times and some serious effort to make up the gap to my teammate Nazim in P2, but I managed to pull over seven tenths of a second per lap on him, which actually gave me the opportunity to overtake with six laps to go. Seven tenths of a second quicker, consistently faster than Asman there, the uh, Cameron Das, the championship leader currently from America, racing here in Euro Formula. He knows how this championship works and he is eyeing up second place for the taking. Onto the Kemmel straight they go. This is where the toe comes in handy. Asman, wise to it, defending that inside line for all he might, but I think Das is going to get him even before they get into the braking zone. Das has a little squiggle just to make sure he's got that cover. And there we have it, our first podium of the weekend from P9 to P2 and fastest lap of the race, which will give us pole for the next race. So this was exactly the recovery drive we needed. And the green flag will fly at the back, signaling we are ready to go racing. It is all eyes to the lights. And Finally, we are starting from pole for the final race of the weekend. I had a great launch off the line. Luckily, the car next to me stalled, which gave me a little bit of a cushion going into turn one. Basically, from the rest of the race on, I never looked back. I just drove flat out to the point of keeping the tires in the temperature window, and it was looking like the perfect win to finish off the weekend. Until this happened. Out of the corner ahead, further up the road, Kaminiar surprised Whoa! everyone. And he's gone to the wall! And it's all gone wrong. And just like that, all the work I did to break the toe was erased with just two laps to go. The race went to time instead of lap count, so I would now have to defend my position for two laps until the checkered flag. I had just about the perfect restart, which prevented anyone from behind from contesting me coming onto the penultimate lap. You can see how much the gap shrinks between these two clips, but you just gain so much time up through Eau Rouge and down the Kemmel Strait in the slipstream that it's very, very difficult to defend from the lead here. 
half a second to seven tenths of a second, depending where we are on the track. And this is the arguably the most important part of the track and where an overtake can be done. How much speed can Foster carry up through Eau Rouge, through Radion and on to the Kemmel straight here, the highest speed part of the track. He pulls alongside Cameron Das, has a little wiggle there, wanting to cut back perhaps, but Das is there. They go wheel to wheel. It looks like Foster might just be able to get a nose ahead. Das will hold the inside line, but that becomes the outside line going through Le Coom and he forces Das off that wide. He has to hold his nerve. You can see how Louis was able to put his nose ahead into turn 5, which meant I just didn't have the leverage to force him into a mistake. I tried my best to hold the position around the outside, but he pushed me onto the exit curve, which is really bumpy, so I really had no other option but to settle for second. Obviously, losing a race on the last lap is one of the worst feelings ever, but I still collected solid points after an unfortunate start to the weekend. We once again are coming away from the race weekend as championship leader, and we have eight podiums, four of which are wins out of nine total races so far, so I think a bit of bad luck is always gonna sneak its way in there. All right, guys, I think that's gonna wrap up my weekend at Spa. So this weekend, I'm heading to Budapest for what is the fourth round of the Euro Formula Championship. I'm really looking forward to it because it's actually the first time we're gonna be on ultra high downforce so far this season. Um, Spa is obviously a low downforce track, and the other tracks are kind of like a medium downforce. Uh, configuration so Budapest will definitely require a different driving style but it should be fun so with that being said thank you guys for watching I'm looking forward to bringing you guys a new video very very soon